Hey guys, it's John. I've mentioned before that I'm planning to buy a house this winter, and I've made tons of progress in the last year and a half. With about five months left, I feel like I've made really good progress and I feel like pretty confident about my purchase coming up. I've got a few tips that have helped me along the way, so here's a beginner's guide to affording a house in 2019. So a little bit of background on my home search. It's just gonna be me and my girlfriend, so we we're really not looking for that much. All right, so me and her are looking for a three bedroom house. For bathrooms, we're probably looking for something like two or three bathrooms. And then I would definitely want a garage because I mentioned before that I plan to do a garage gym. And after looking through Zillow pretty much weekly for the last couple of months, I know that a three bedroom house in this area goes for about anywhere between like 230 to 280, which is definitely realistic for my price range. So I've priced my savings goal to be about 20% of that, so somewhere around 50 to 60,000. So I've been recently told I might not necessarily want to put all that money into a house right away, but that's just something that I can figure out later, and I definitely still want to save up as much money as I can just to have it on hand. I've been saving up for about a year and a half, and right now I have about $34,000. And you might think that's either a lot of money or a little bit of money, but to me that's the most money I've ever saved up before. So how I got that $34,000 so far in a year and a half? I have some tips that'll definitely help, so here goes. So the first step is to get out of debt. If you don't have debt, kudos to you. But if you do have debt, stick around for just a second. So debt is one of those things that seems super normal in America. It's almost American to hold some sort of debt. Everyone these days seems to graduate with some sort of student debt or have some sort of car loan or some sort of medical loan. But if you do have debt, you should probably rethink buying a home just yet. It's like spinning your tires or walking up the wrong side of an escalator. It just doesn't make sense to save up for a house when debt here is growing potentially faster than you're saving. So of course there's good debt and bad debt, and there's differing opinions on what either of those mean. But what I'm talking about is stuff like credit card loans, personal loans, medical loans, and even student loans. Having debt is like an emergency. It's like you owe more money than you actually have. And to me, I feel like paying off this debt is more important than saving for a house. So that's just a quick blurb about debt. When it comes down to it, just reduce your spending, increase your income, and get out of debt. The steps that I'm about to share can also be applied to paying off your debt. All right, so my first tip for saving for a home is to obviously spend less than what you make. This is a really simple truth. You just need to live below your means and you'll get there eventually. And obviously the more you live below your means, the faster you get to saving for a house. And these tips don't necessarily apply to just saving for a house. They can be for saving up for a car payment, a vacation, retirement, and so on. So let's get into it. So all these tips I'm using myself and they've helped me a lot. So making all these changes myself, I probably now have between a 50 and 60% savings rate. And if you don't know what a savings rate is, so your savings rate is the money you have left over after paying rent, gasoline, food, and so on. Alright, so the first actual tip I have is to just get a roommate. If you're currently living by yourself or in some sort of situation where you feel like you might be paying too much for rent, you should try getting yourself out of that. I think maybe not everyone needs to live in a 1,000 month one bedroom apartment by themselves. I've always found that living on your own is way more expensive than sharing a place. So last year I was actually in the same situation. I was living in a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment by myself. It's a really long story, but the rent was about $11.50 a month. Now I could afford it, and the privacy was nice, but it was definitely not worth the money that I was spending on it. It didn't make sense for me to be living in a 900 square foot apartment by myself. So once that lease was over, I moved to a new place, the place that I'm currently in. I currently live in my girlfriend's sister's basement. The rent is way cheaper than what I was paying before, and on some level we're helping each other out. She's helping me save faster for a house, and I'm also allowing her to live more stress-free with a little bit more cash flow. So it is a little bit of a sacrifice living in the basement and you know sharing the kitchen and the driveway and trying not to get in her hair and all that kind of stuff. But I think that this is definitely worth it in the long run. All right, tip number two, live closer to work. So there are a ton of benefits to living closer to work, and obviously the most obvious one is just it's cheaper to live closer to work. On top of that, you get so much of your time back, avoiding the hassle of driving to and from work. I have a friend that used to commute from DC to Baltimore. On a good day, the commute was about an hour long. On a bad day, it was somewhere between two and three hours. He also didn't drive the most fuel-efficient car either. I think it's like an Acura RDX, which gets like 28 miles a gallon. He was telling me that he was filling up gas between one and two times a week and each month he would be filling up six to eight times. So he was spending about $300 of gas a month. Luckily he quit that job and got a job way closer to home. 
He said that he went from filling up six to eight times a month to filling up less than one time a month. He's so close that he can now bike to work. So obviously my friend's example is kind of extreme, although I don't think that is too uncommon. If you value your time and money, it's definitely worth moving to a place that's closer to work for you. So this is actually what I did with myself actually. I used to live downtown and the commute was about 25 minutes each way. On top of saving money and gas, it was also just like a headache driving in traffic every day. So for me, I value my time a lot and I moved closer to work to make that happen. In my last video, I also talked about how I quit my gym and that ended up saving me about $30 a month in gasoline. So back when I still had my old gym and my old apartment, I was spending about $140 to $160 a month just filling up from driving everywhere. And maybe if I drove up to my parents that month, it could have been as high as $180 in gas. So now at my current place, I live about two miles from work and I also work out there. I went from spending about $160 a month to $70 this month so far. That $70 is also including a trip up to DC where we went to see a concert. So $70 is actually including a road trip. So my regular gas spending is probably actually underneath $70. All right, step number three, stop buying random stuff on Amazon. This step is really just about being realistic. I think that Amazon's made it way too easy to buy stuff that you don't necessarily need. And having Prime membership just makes it feel like you're entitled to buying something every month, otherwise your membership goes to waste. Well, what I want to say is that you can literally live without buying a new Instant Pot or a new water bottle online. You've lived without a portable charger your entire life, so why do you necessarily need a second one to make your life more convenient, you know? So one of the things about Amazon is they always do this thing where if you spend over $35, you'll get free one-day shipping, so you always end up buying something you absolutely don't need. Like, I was checking my wish list earlier, and I found this aquarium hotel for betta fish for $30 in my wish list. And I was really close to buying this, and I'm looking back at it and I'm like, why did I ever need this? Why does this even exist? So what I'm saying is that it's really easy to just buy random crap all the time on Amazon, and you definitely don't need to do that. I've realized that making tons of purchases on Amazon, though they feel small, really add up in the end. And these purchases really take away from your savings potential on saving up for an actual house. So my work dad Clay actually activates his Prime membership only when he needs to buy stuff. Doing this actually blew my mind because when he was reactivating his account, they actually gave him an entire month of Prime for free to lure him back in. So because of that, he was only buying stuff when he needed to, and he was also getting free Prime membership for that month. So that just means that you don't necessarily need to buy things throughout the year. Maybe just buy everything at once to save on a membership. So for myself, I do occasionally still buy stuff, but it, I've cut down on it a lot. I remember just getting boxes like every week, multiple times a week. It really just added up in the end. Now I've become a lot more mindful of things that I put in my cart. Sometimes I'll even let it sit in my cart for over a day before I actually end up purchasing it. Also related to my other tip, since I do live in a small basement apartment, I actually don't have any room to put anything, so there's no point in me buying stuff anymore anyways. Alright, so those are my biggest money saving tips. Doing all those together, I've probably saved over $500 a month combining them all together. So $500 a month over a year is about $6,000 a year. Alright, so now I just want to talk about being realistic with your goals. So the first part of this is just being realistic with your price range and knowing what you can and can't afford. I think it's really easy to get distracted by houses on like HGTV or Instagram where they're all super modern and super nice and renovated and everything like that. But not necessarily everyone needs to be in a house like that or can afford one like that. I know that those houses are really nice, but I realize that those houses are meant for like celebrities or social media influencers or, you know, just not someone like me. It'd be awesome to live in somewhere like that one day, but the reality is I don't need a six bedroom house as my first house. You know, I'm just looking for something like a three bedroom, two or three bathroom that's within 15 minutes of work. That's kind of my criteria. So what I'm talking about is just being realistic with your income, your savings. So I think that there's a lot of room for improvement and that the first house that I'm going to buy isn't going to be perfect. I also have to realize that when purchasing a house, I probably have to make sacrifices. I know that for me, I want a garage and a really nice kitchen. My girlfriend wants a nice kitchen also, but she wants a basement. And we might not necessarily be able to find a house like that within our price range. And that's just something that we have to be cognizant of. All right, so the last point that I wanna make is I think that most people have to realize that affording a house is gonna take a long time. So buying a house is one of the biggest purchases that anyone makes. And rushing into this 
kind of thing is probably not a good idea. And to afford a down payment for a house, you have to be willing to save for a really long time. Alright, so think about it this way. You want to buy a $300,000 house, and you know that you want to put 20% down. So you've got to save up $60,000. But then you realize that you only save $1,000 a month. To get to $60,000 would take you 60 months. So purchasing a house isn't something that you irrationally decide. For me, I'll have been saving up for almost two years for a house, and that's with a 50 to 60% savings rate. The same could be said about any other big purchases, like a car or a wedding. You just have to realize that these things take time. So obviously what you need to do is lower your expenses and increase your earnings, or both, which is what I've been doing and it's been helping me a lot. You know, for me, making sacrifices like living in a small apartment or quitting my gym has really helped me save for this house even faster. I've also made a bunch of sacrifices at work by working harder or working smarter, and that's actually helped me get a promotion recently. And with that promotion, I haven't changed my lifestyle at all. If anything, I've made my lifestyle even more frugal. Alright, so those are all the tips that I have right now. I hope those made sense. I'm about five months away from getting a house, and I'll definitely bring you guys along for that journey. Hope you guys liked this one. If you liked it, click the thumbs up button. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos, or want to see upcoming home tour stuff, subscribe to my channel. And leave a comment if you have any other tips, or even questions about my tips. Thanks for watching, this is John. I'll see you in the next one.